It's Wednesday, July 16th, and we have two main risk areas of severe weather out here today. One is going to be a slight risk out here in our Upper Plains Convergence Zone, which stretches all the way from Colorado up into the southeastern corner of Wyoming. And then our other one is going to be up here in the Midwest, which stretches from northern Illinois into parts of Wisconsin. Then we have a large marginal risk of severe weather, which stretches all the way from our Upper Convergence Zone back into the northeast, and then widespread thunderstorms expected across the U.S. as well. Today's risk of severe weather is likely going to be fueled by the widespread threat of some severe winds. We have a very large 5% additional risk of severe winds, which anywhere in this area could see some damaging winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. Then we have a pretty isolated 15% chance of severe winds up here in our Midwestern risk area, which is an area which could see gusts anywhere between 60 and possibly even eclipsing 70 miles an hour. And then I could expect to maybe see an up upgrade back here in parts of the central and upper plains as it does look like there will be a couple of strong storm clusters back there today and our hail risk is going to be pretty isolated in the grand scheme of things and it's just going to be out here in our upper plains risk area and out here we could see some large hail in the earlier stages of our storm possibly even around one and a half inches in diameter and there is going to be a pretty conditional tornado risk today with our storm clusters one is going to be out here in the midwest then our other one is going to be out here in the upper plains and these would both be for the conditional risk of a couple of weak spin up tornadoes and our flood risk is mainly going to stretch from the central to southern plains all the way up into the midwest then a little blotch back here out in the northeast and all of our marginal risk of flooding would be areas where we could see anywhere between one to two inches of rain in a pretty short period of time then our slight risk areas are areas where we could see anywhere between two to five inches of rain here's a visual look at the rainfall in our central plains flood risk area and we can see a pretty large blotch of receiving anywhere between one to two inches of rain out here and then a lot of isolated patches nearing four inches of rain however our midwest flood risk area is going to be a little different they could start seeing rain as early as the morning hours. And instead of being widespread, there's gonna be a pretty focused corridor which stretches all the way from Western Iowa, all the way up into parts of Northern Michigan. And in this corridor, we could see definitely some blotches possibly over five inches of rain and widespread areas receiving anywhere between three to four inches. The last corridor to watch out for is going to be our mid-Atlantic to northeastern risk area for some excessive rainfall and possibly even some flash flooding out here again. We see a lot of that widespread one to two inches with a isolated area possibly receiving anywhere between two to five inches back down here in central Pennsylvania, northern Virginia, and even parts of Maryland near Baltimore. And for our temperatures across the nation today, we see that we have a pretty large area of really below average temperatures for this time of year, even around 53 degrees up here in the northern plains, which is going to be actually kind of crazy. And pretty much everywhere else is going to be average with a couple of above average blotches that would be back here in the southeast with a high pressure system and then some isolated areas back here in the west which could be in the low 90s and then of course back into new mexico and parts of the southern plains which could receive some temperatures anywhere between the mid to high 90s and here's our simulated reflectivity from our central plains risk area and we can see that we get some storm initiation in the early afternoon back here in colorado near our upper plains convergence zone and we're going to look for a couple of clusters. One is going to spawn down here in parts of Colorado, which will span into Kansas. And another one is going to be up here, which spans from Wyoming into Nebraska. Now, both of these clusters in their early stages could pose a threat of some hail and possibly a weak spin up tornado before they turn into mostly rain minky clusters with that threat of damaging winds. Additionally, we could see some strong to severe storms be spawned along a outflow boundary right here along the kansas nebraska border which would eventually push south and could also bring that conditional threat or some severe gust and other things feeling these storms would be a short wave pushing through the region back up here a decently strong cold front which will be pushing southeastward then a high pressure system back here in the four corner states providing some organizing shear our second main area to look out for is going to be around an area of redevelopment around a mesoscale convective vortex which is going to push into parts of northern Illinois and Wisconsin today and we could see some redevelopment along it as early as the early afternoon right after midday and it looks like up here could be a all hazards threat of severe weather with that risk of hail being pretty small but definitely the risk for a couple of spin-up tornadoes maybe and some damaging winds and this would push off into Lake Michigan by the evening hours but it would likely drape a bit of an outflow boundary across the region which would spawn some storms back into parts of central to southern Illinois 
And then out in front of this, there is going to be some troughing and a bit of frontal activity as well, which could spawn some storms in front of it, which if they could cluster, could pose a severe risk. And these storms back here in parts of Ohio, pushing into Pennsylvania, are the same storms that we were just talking about. And like I said before, they could pose that severe threat to anywhere in the mid-Atlantic, even expanding into parts of the lower northeast. However, that threat would be quite a bit more conditional. Here are 500 millibar winds, and we're going to want to watch for a couple of short waves moving through the region. One is going to be out here in the mid-Atlantic to lower northeast. That's going to be a cause for that cluster of storms out here, which is going to be pretty messy. You also see a decent short wave pushing through our northern Illinois to Wisconsin risk area and eventually Michigan, which is going to help to bring that pretty strong cluster and storms associated with that mesoscale convective vortex. And we also see a couple of various shortwaves or ripples in our jet stream pushing through our risk area back here in the central plains. And those will also help to initiate storms. Here is a weather sounding from across our upper plains convergence zone and where we could expect to see a couple of clusters of storms, possibly even severe back in the central plains. Our hodograph doesn't look super special. However, we do have some curvature, which is one of the reasons for that conditional tornado threat. We also have some veering in our winds, which could support that. And although our shear isn't going to be super great in the lower levels and on a helicity standpoint, our organizing shear isn't going to be poor at all at around 30 knots. So definitely some organized storms possibly bringing that threat of some large hail and could possibly feel that threat of maybe a weak tornado risk. Now our tornado risk is mostly going to be dampened by a higher lowest cloud level, which wouldn't really allow that to occur. But for other things like hail, we have a decent bit of cape up here near our freezing layer and then our mid-level lapse rates are 8.6 Celsius decreasing per kilometer. So definitely some large hail out here in the central plains to upper plains area. We also see some drier aloft, so favorable mixing for some severe winds. We also see a fairly moist environment with a 62 dew point. And then our cape is going to be around 3,000, so absolutely favorable for some severe weather. Our low-level lapse rates are also going to be pretty high, which would be favorable for some damaging winds. Our precipital water is not going to be super duper high, but it will be somewhat high at 1.23 inches. Our relative humidity is going to be around 50%, and our downdraft cape is going to be nearing 1500 so all things that would support that threat for severe winds so it looks like all hazards could be in play for our central plains to upper plains converted zone risk area today and here's a weather sounding from along that outflow boundary from along the kansas nebraska border we do see quite a bit of a curvature in our hodograph then we also see some veering in our winds so possibly a conditional tornado threat along that outflow boundary now our shear and helicity isn't going to be poor at all and neither is our organizing shear now the main thing is that this would be a entirely linear line of storms so although our shear isn't going to be bad at all that linearness of that storm mode would definitely hamper that threat our lowest cloud level would be low enough for possibly a couple of spin-up tornadoes along it and the air would be more stable along that outflow boundary. So there is the question of if we will even get storms at all, and if we do get them, will they be able to break that cap? But if they do, they could possibly produce some small hail because we do have some decent mid-level lapse rates at eight Celsius decrease per kilometer and just a moist environment in a modestly unstable environment around 2000 joules per kilogram. So definitely the possibility of some severe winds, possibly a spin up tornado and not a super large likelihood of hail, but I wouldn't rule out seeing some hailstones, possibly around three quarters of an inch. And our last weather sounding is gonna be from in front of our mesoscale convective vortex, back out in northern Illinois and Wisconsin. In our hodograph, we do see some curvature and our shear is going to be pretty favorable out here. So if there can be any storms, which can be less linear, definitely a tornado threat could be realized out here. Also adding on to the tornado threat is a three cape at around 136, which would support that threat of just general severe weather, but especially tornadoes. And our organizing shear isn't going to be all that bad either at around 30 knots. Our lowest cloud level would be low enough to support that threat. We also have a very moist environment in a very unstable environment around 4,200 joules per kilogram of Cape. So definitely super favorable for some severe storms. Our precipital water is going to be quite high at around two inches. So one of the reasons for that flooding threat and even the threat of some severe winds. So out here in our Midwest risk area, I do think the threat of mostly damaging winds, possibly some small hail at around three quarters of an inch, and even a couple of spin up tornadoes is in play. And switching gears to a tropical standpoint, here is Invest 93L, which could possibly develop into a tropical depression or a tropical storm in the coming days. And we're going to see that it looks like it does have a bit of an organizing trend. We see a lot more convection in the center than we did yesterday. But the main thing is that on this track, it is going to be interacting with a lot 
of land, which could hinder its ability to develop. And this less likelihood of developing is definitely mirrored in the National Hurricane Center's outlook. They have not upgraded the probability of it forming today. It still stands at only 40%. So definitely some questions of this might not even form. And if it does, it would probably be only weak. Now, it is important to mention that our sea surface temperatures are still warm and some crazy things can occur when our sea surface temperatures are this warm. But this is pretty much the only positive factor for this storm's environment. Like I said previously, the track the storm is slated to take is going to be closer to land, which would hinder its ability to stay out and see longer and possibly be able to develop more. And it wouldn't be interacting with land, which would allow it to organize more. So we can see in a lot of these tracks, it doesn't really pass over tropical depression strength with possibly becoming a tropical storm before it approaches the Louisiana boot. Now, one thing to note is that there is a large agreement of that this storm will be traveling towards the Louisiana boot. So if you are out here in this region, possibly even in New Orleans, definitely be weather aware of this system. And also looks like impacts could start to be seen by Thursday night. Now, one of the main things inhibiting this storm from really growing is going to be the wind shear out in our development region. We do see a high pressure system right up here in the southeast, which is actually helping to steer the storm a bit and helping it from not just completely going northward. But because of this high pressure system, we actually could see quite a bit of shear in our region. This is July 17th, and there is going to be a quite a bit of shear right out where our storm is going to be, which definitely would not be conducive for development at all. And I will say our moisture doesn't look too awful, but pretty much the entire way, it will be battling some dry air of sorts, which will be trying to get inside of the storm. But overall, our moisture actually doesn't look too awful. So this would be somewhat conducive for development. But overall, considering the environment in front of the storm, it does not look super great. And then coupled with it interacting with land pretty much all the way until it starts to make impacts out here, which would be expected in Louisiana, also hinders that threat of it really becoming any more than a weak tropical storm at the highest.